Okay, I'm here at the final day of the Dream Hack Open with Sword of, who just got eliminated in the round of eight. How do you overall feel about your tournament performance? Um, I feel quite good overall because most of the games I played, I played like very solid and I kept that level. I never had any highs or any lows, so uh, I'm pretty happy with that. And um, yeah, except for the last game, I think I played really good for the entire tournament, but I didn't play too bad there either. Money wise, really good. Uh, you obviously stayed in Korea for a month with the NSOSA team before this event and before the uh, regular season of WCS was announced. Uh, do you feel like you got this far in the tournament, this deep in the tournament simply because of your Korean training or do you think that you always had it in you? Uh, well, that's, for me it's kind of complicated because when I'm in Europe I don't really practice as much as I do in Korea. Like, when, I, uh, mean, when I'm in Korea I'm very motivated to practice, so I just can practice all day without problems. But when I'm in Europe I don't have the same motivation really. So, I, I, of course, it helps me a lot, for sure. Um, just, to, just to develop further on that point, um, you play, you've told before that you've played pretty high level brood war on IC Cup A minus. Do you feel like you practiced this hard in Korea then simply because you obviously admired the, their superiority in brood war or do you feel like just to have everything sorted for you and you don't have to worry about doing chores besides gaming in Korea? Um, I don't think it's too much of those, maybe some of the brood war background but um, mostly it's just like when you're playing in Korea you're always playing good players like every game even on the ladder. And when you're in Europe and you're laddering, you will get good games, maybe, maybe two or three out of ten games, which is not enough because then you get kind of sloppy and you start like doing mistakes because you're not getting punished for doing mistakes. So, but in Korea, like the moment you start playing sloppy and make mistakes, you're gonna start losing all the games. So that's just like the the high, like, how do you say, like the high skill level that forces you to play good as well. Uh, in Heart of the Swarm, it's obvious that. Uh, I guess you could say that all races kind of have gotten more of these uh, units that punish mistakes like Medivax from the Terrans now with the speed boost if you're not observ too observant enough they can just shred a mineral line and just boost away from there and you can get time warped and stuff like that by the Protoss. Do you feel like that overall is... I guess you could say that do you feel like these kind of <coughs> these kind of spells are good for the game overall, and they, they, that they will punish. Do you feel like they, they will punish bad players more, so to speak? And do you feel like practicing against properly used spells like that in Korea is what will separate the good from the bad in Heart of Swarm? Um, yeah, I think the new stuff in Heart of Swarm is really like put a new height on the skill, skill ceiling. So it's a lot more multitasking and like action going on all the time, whereas in Sea Liberty was basically just like build a death ball and attack each other. Um, so that's like a really good, I think, because now there's like constant action and you have to be really, you have to have good multitasking and you have to be like out on the map being active. You can't just sit and build up a big army anymore. Mm. It doesn't really work. So that's, I think it has made the game a lot better, both for players and for spectators. Uh, Korea was pretty quick to like, <coughs> at least in the initially take um, Heart of the Swarm to heart and it seems like that's also the case for the outside world so what are your overall hopes with what Heart of the Swarm can achieve and in terms of balancing Wings of Liberty was kind of controversial as many it seemed like Blizzard was very it made a lot of knee-jerk reactions to stuff and didn't like give players enough time to figure stuff out do you think that Heart of the Swarm will bring a change to that or do you think that it'll still be or that Blizzard will intervene more than enough to like damage the growth and like potential of certain strategies? Um, I think in the early days of Wings of Liberty, Blizzard was a bit too impatient, impatient with the patches. Like they patched stuff pretty often in the early like few months of the, of the game. But, and I think that was really bad because, and also the way they addressed the issues was they nerfed them. They never really buffed anything. But in Heart of the Swarm, they're being a lot more like careful with what, with what they do, and they prefer to buff instead of nerf, which I think is a lot better for the game. Because that's, I think the reason of how they did in the Wings of Liberty days is what caused the game to become, become kind of stale towards the end. Um, <coughs> if we then keep on the topic of Koreans and <laughs> uh, players that take the time to practice in Korea, you only lost to... Um, you lost 
to center. If I recall correctly, you lost. I, I won. Oh no, so, sorry, you lost the puzzle and you lost to Nanua. Uh, obviously. And MC. Oh yeah, obviously, all of them have practiced in Korea. Two of them are Koreans. So do you feel like? Uh, actually, Cass told me earlier in the interview that the skill level between foreigners and Koreans aren't isn't that big. But do you feel like? Like judging from your experience here, that the Koreans still hold a dominant grasp over the game. Yeah, the Koreans are still very dominant, and they're gonna, just going to get more because they have like the infrastructure to build up any talent. Like they have the uh, local leagues that like, if you can get into a pro gaming team in Korea, like either a Kespa team or a ESF team, then you can live off gaming because you're in a pro team at the house. You can practice all day. You're being taken care of and you have those leagues to compete in. But we don't have that in the West. We only have like these major tournaments that we travel around to. And it's not the same infrastructure. So it's like not anyone can do it. You have to be fairly successful to be able to do it. So I think that's the biggest difference. And that's why anyone, I think pretty much any B-teamer from Korea could come to this event and finish higher than most foreigners. Okay then, so where do you yourself kind of see uh, yourself placing in future tournaments then given that you said that you aren't as motivated when you're in Europe will you go back to Korea now in the off season or what are your plans? Yeah, what I want to do is uh, travel to Korea when the WCS seasons aren't running basically so I can practice there and when the WCS season starts again I'll go back to Europe and play and basically just go back and forth like that and that's how I want to do it anyways right now but we'll see what happens maybe in the future I'll try to dedicate one year to Korea if I think I get good enough and yeah, but my main hopes for WCS is just to get us a chance in the West to like get the infrastructure that Korea has so we can start competing with them in like not in one year or two years, but maybe in five or ten years. So if we move more locally then <laughs> to and look at Sweden, obviously um, it's kind of, I think Thor Zane described it as a derby between I guess you could say the top four players in Sweden, which are which is you, Sase, Thorzein, and Naniwa. And Naniwa, Naniwa and Thorzein, of course, the most notable given their history and rivalry and stuff like that. And you just uh, lost to Naniwa in the tournament here. Do you think that he is undisputedly the best Swede, or do you think that you, uh, on a good day you could beat him? Do you think Thorzein could beat him? Or yeah, I think all of us top four could take games to each other on a good day. But I think Naniwa is slightly better than the rest of us. And it, like he's been practicing a lot in Korea and that really shows, shows through, like he's very solid, so... Like, could you give, beyond just saying that he's solid, can you give like, kind of a concrete example of something that he simply does better than the other three of you? And if you compare to another player? Um, he seems to have like a really good mentality about the game, like the way he approaches it, like he's... Uh, it's just like he, he makes sure that there's nothing that can go wrong for him. I'm, I'm not sure how to describe exactly, but he's very solid and he has a deeper understanding of the game, I feel, than the rest of us. Like, just slightly. So, if you would like, hypothetically, if you would rank the four of you, which who would you place in number one then? And like, yeah, I would have to place Naniwa as number one. And for the other three, I really don't know because I haven't played Thor's in forever and I've only played Sasa a couple of times and I haven't seen them play each other either, so uh, it's, it's really hard for me to say. Okay then, uh, any... oh. Yeah, so based on results, I probably have to say Thor's thing. but yeah, for the current skill level, I, I can't say. Uh, any final words then? Um, yeah, just thank you for this interview and thank you to my team and our sponsors, Mad Cats, Triton, AMD and Sapphire. And thanks to all my fans. Alright, thank you so much for the interview.